Who wants to refurbish some camping chairs? Guys, so the joys of owning rental property, the things they don't tell you. So it's about 8 a.m. and I had to come over to this rental property here. And I want to tell you a couple secrets that I've learned over time about rental properties and, and how to manage them and kind of the ins and outs of, of renting uh, a property out to tenants as the landlord. Uh, as you see here, I have a pod. Uh, the pod will be picked up this morning and cleaned out. We actually had an unfortunate incident at this property where the water was leaking from the toilet and the tenants actually didn't turn off the leaking water and the water continued to leak all over the house. And then that water ended up turning into mold. I don't think the mold is too bad, but in the end it is still mold. So we had to get the tenants out and that wasn't so easy because they weren't ready to move out. And so we ended up having to rip out some carpet, like you see here and rugs that were in there. And overall, it's it's pretty uh, disgusting. I personally would not want to be living there. But come to find out, of course, the tenants, I don't check on them as much as I probably should. And I don't understand what people seem to think sometimes on what is clean and what's not clean. Uh, I literally just went through the house and I took pest remover squirt spray and I sprayed the house down. So uh, let's go take a look at the house now. Keep in mind, the tenants did have to move out. So the smells just walking into the house. The first thing I can see down here is some sort of specimen from an individual critter. Carpets are pretty shot in this house. And as I walk through, you see that there's home defense laying on the ground, uh, weed killer on the inside here. They, this was actually a converted room, but they, were, they made this into an office. Uh, walking through here, the odors are, are pretty, pretty rough. I should probably have some sort of a mask on going through here. When they left, they turned off the electricity and they of course didn't clean out the fridge uh, because they had to move out pretty quickly. Meanwhile, I've put this over the sink a lot of flies in here. I don't think they cleaned out the air filter. In fact, I highly doubt they cleaned out the air filter because it's up there. So this is the area that they came in and had to cut out the carpet. And as I was walking through earlier, I noticed a collection of bugs over here. Hello, mister. But the people were living here. Uh, I guess some people have certain standards. I'm not a fan of living in these conditions. The bathroom was pretty nasty. Mold on the ceiling here was not from the flood on the toilet, and this was not the bad toilet. So this is gonna have to be redone. I wish they would have told me I would have taken care of that sooner. Gonna clear a little cockroach. The floors are just nasty in here. Disgusting, the walls. So as you can see, we walk through the house. Clearly the house was not maintained. And now I have to come in here and clean this up. I have to get this ready for another tenant to come in and to live here. So the joys of owning rental property, the things they don't tell you. Now, when I first came in here, I looked at that wall and I thought, oh my gosh, that black stuff is really nasty. That's mold. But after having the mold inspector come, he told us, nope, that's just glue they used for the baseboard. Uh, the mold is this other stuff over here. We had no idea. These were nice drawers. The water traveled all the way back there. So the water was literally leaking out of the toilet and the tenants did not turn off the water. They didn't turn off the valve. I talked to the neighbor and the neighbor, she said uh, she advised them to turn off the water, but they didn't and it just continued to leak. So it leaves a lot of work for me to do. This doesn't look good. They put incense right here, probably to mask their odors. But this is what you have to deal with when you are a landlord. It's basically my second job. I get to come into these properties and evaluate them and fix them and maintain them and keep people on their toes. So when I'm not at work, this is what I'm doing. I'm a handyman, I'm a fix it guy, and I've learned a lot over the years, especially over YouTube. YouTube can be your best friend when you're getting into this business and you don't know what to do or where to find something or how to fix something. You can YouTube, you can Google, and uh, try to figure out the solutions there. I'm gonna shut this door. We have a professional exterminator coming. We have some people coming to pick up this pod. I'm gonna need to get a trash can, big trash bin out front. We're gonna take the trash here, take the trash out back. Oh, let's go see. I didn't even show you out back. They left some stuff behind. To some people, this is terrific, but I don't want this stuff. I don't want any of these things. This is how they left the property. Pretty rough for me. Hello. 
Now the property wasn't in perfect condition. I acknowledge that when I rented it, I bought the house. I think the individual had passed away, but uh, they left some things behind. Bicycle, computer screen, Lenovo, carpet cleaner, power washer. People leave stuff behind. They think like, hey, I'm not gonna use this. Let me leave it behind for, for the next guy to use. And I'm the next guy in. Well, truth is, I don't want your stuff either. If you don't want it, I probably don't want it. And I certainly don't wanna haul it away. So now I'm gonna have to charge these people. And um, these people were the ones that we made the exception for. We have several rental properties and we have high standards. We typically collect two months security deposit and one month rent. Tenants flip out. You know, we have a hard time getting tenants because we're a little more stringent on our standards. And so that's one of the challenges. They say, oh my gosh, I don't have that much money. And they probably don't, I don't doubt it because at the end of the day, I've got to come into these properties that they have completely neglected, not taken care of and I have to fix them. And guess what? I can't work for free. The people that work for me, they certainly don't work for free, especially in COVID conditions, which by the way, there's nobody around, nobody within hundred feet, so I don't have a mask on. All right, some awesome camping chairs. Maybe I could refurbish these. <laughs> Who wants to refurbish some camping chairs? Guys, we have some shoes here, some coffee mugs. There's a headboard, Razor scooter. Look at that, ladders here, broom. So I'm going to lock up the place. I'm gonna make some phone calls and have some people come in and start cleaning this up. As soon as we get water turned back on here, we're gonna power wash the outside and start demoing and start from scratch. A project like this to come in and fix this, this house, it, it takes cash. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to rip out the carpets, redo the house. I think this is about a thousand square foot house. So getting tile, laying it, uh, I think it comes out to around $6 a square foot here in Florida. Uh, you could probably get it cheaper where you are. It could be more expensive, but I think that that's what we have to pay. So a thousand square foot, that's $6,000 just to uh, do the floors. And then we have to paint the outside. That might cost $1,000, $2,000. I'm not really sure. I haven't gotten quotes on that. Then coming in and doing the inside, that's another couple thousand dollars. And then we have all the small stuff, any of the vanities or fixtures that have to be replaced. That's a tough one. That's a couple hundred dollars more. And then if you have any faucets, any cabinets, you can get into some more serious money. So we're talking 10, 15, $20,000 to come in and rehab this house and get it ready for the next tenant. And they turned over to me one month. These guys were the ones that gave me one month security deposit. And we actually made an exception for them. Uh, they didn't qualify for our minimum standards. They didn't have enough income to stay at the property here. We ask for a three month salary uh, compared to the rent. So if the rent is $1,000, we ask them to show us $3,000. And that can be everybody living in the house, husband, wife, mother, brother, cousin, doesn't matter. Just everybody collectively has to make $3,000 to move in. These guys didn't qualify. So they said, hey, my husband's on this. He's got this issue, uh, medical this, unfortunately. Can you help us? And we said, yeah. We hear your story, man. We can really understand where you're coming from. We'll make it work for you. And then they said, great, thank you. And then they started paying rent. They paid rent on time for the first few months. And then the next month, it slowly started getting a little bit later and a little bit later until they were months behind. In fact, they were maybe a month behind. And then, then their one year lease ended. And then they stayed here month to month and they always got, uh, they always got caught up and I didn't want to have to come in and fix up the property and spend more money. So I always just dealt with the late rental payments. Um, that's probably not the best, best scenario, but I have other things to do versus, you know, trying to evict the tenant and get the tenants out. That's the last thing I want to be doing. So we just dealt with their late rents and uh, they, they eventually always paid their rent. And then I came up with a concept, hey, let's raise the rent. And so we, we told them at the beginning of the year, we're gonna raise your rent. And next thing you know, they paid the rent that they were, they were behind on and then they paid the current month. So I was just shocked. And then I thought, hmm, they didn't pay the extra uh, $100 that I was raising the rent. So the tenants ended up paying me the money and then they didn't pay the the rent and then the water damage happened and we just had to tell them to leave 
I ended up buying a hotel for these guys. And buying that hotel was not cheap. And I put them there for several weeks. I forget off the top of my head, maybe even a month. Plus I'm paying for the pod, plus I'm paying for the mortgage on this house while it's vacant. So I'm gonna have some, some considerations that I have to figure out what to do because I've never been in this situation before. So I really look forward to uh, figuring out the solutions. And uh, that's why I am able to collect the big bucks. I gotta be the problem solver here and uh, come up with these these answers to all of these problems. And it's not fun and you're dealing with other people's garbage. So I wanted to share with you guys what it was like to be a landlord and to own rental property and uh, what to expect. I'll probably do some more videos about what to expect and probably plan them out a little bit better versus just walking through the rental property and uh, seeing all this disgusting trash. I have to redo this decking, so many things. Well, I guess it's true. Be careful what you wish for. Thank you guys, take care.